Our movie opens with a little boy, running out of his room early in the morning, and running to wake his parents yelling, it's today. His parents prepare and take him to school, while he asks them lots of questions, and suggests coming with them. He reminds them that he wants a little brother and not a big brother. Right before the school bus takes him away, his parents, the Littles, meet the head of the adoption agency and are allowed to explore the facility and meet the orphan children. There are so many of them and they sit overwhelmed at the sight of the kids. They meet a talking mouse who is so happy with the way the husband and wife are so in tune with one another. And they literally know what the other person is going to say. The mouse tries to help them choose and he tells them Susan can read French, while Edith can tap dance and blow bubbles at the same time. If they wanted a boy, the mouse says Benny can do handstands, while Andy can run fast. The family learns that the mouse has been at the orphanage for way too long, which is why he knows so much about everyone, and no one wants to adopt a mouse. The littles make their decision, they want the mouse, Stuart. The head of the agency warns them, about adopting out of their species, and the dangers associated with it, but they insist and adopt Stuart. They bring Stuart home, and tell him the house can be found easily by every little from any part of the world. Just as they are showing Stuart around, the family cat, Snowbell, pounces and grabs Stuart between his teeth. They warn Snowbell never to eat Stuart, as he is a member of the family now. George, the little boy comes home from school, excited to see his new adopted brother. George is disappointed, it wasn't what he expected to see, and Stuart is sad that his new brother doesn't like him. At the dinner table, George asks Stuart to pass the gravy, a task impossible for a mouse. The littles try to make Stuart feel at home, and after tucking him in at night, he calls them mom and dad. Snowbell comes in and jumps on the bed, angry that Stuart has a comfy bed, while he sleeps in a rag in the corner, and is angry that Stuart thinks he is his pet. He warns Stuart to stay away from the windows, so the other cats in the neighborhood won't see him, as it will ruin his reputation. In the morning, both George and Stuart go through the same routines, brushing their teeth after their mother Mrs. Little had woken them. When Mrs. Little asks George to send her his laundry, he mistakenly drops his clothes on Stuart and sends them through the laundry chute to Mrs. Little, who places them right in the washer without knowing. Snowbell wouldn't help and Stuart swallowed some detergent, and Mrs. Little saves him from nearly drowning in the washer. George is still unhappy and he doesn't want to go shopping with his new brother. His father suggests he will like his brother more if he will only spend a little time with him. They talk about the boat racing event coming up, and Mr. Little advises him to finish his boat faster so he could participate. But George doesn't want to participate because he always finishes last. Mrs. Little talks to the tailor about Stuart's special clothing needs. Stuart tries out his new clothes and is happy to hear he looks just like a member of the Little family. Family. That evening, there is a party to present Stuart to the rest of the large extended family. When he is introduced, the family is surprised but recovers quickly. All the gifts they brought are for a human boy and there is a slight air of sadness that everyone tries to cover up. Stuart makes a moving speech and makes the family happy. Uncle Crenshaw and Mr. Little hand George a ball, which he should enjoy with his new brother. They ask him to go outside and throw the ball around with his new brother. But George asks them how they expect him to throw the ball around with a mouse or ride a bicycle and do all of the things they want him to do with the little boy. Everyone leaves to avoid the awkwardness. And that night, Stuart climbs into the little bed and asks them about his real family. He says he has an empty space inside of him, asks them about his real family the ones that look like him, and the Littles promise to help. They go to the adoption agency and ask if they could help find Stuart's real family, but the agency says they can't help. At home, Stuart tries to start over with Snowbell, but Snow doesn't want to fraternize with a mouse. A neighborhood cat, named Monty, tries to get into the house, and Snowbell tries to keep him away, so he won't see the mouse. He sneaks in, and eats out of Snowbell's plate. Snowbell tries to hurry the cat so he doesn't see Stuart, as he is afraid the news of the mouse in his home will spread over the neighborhood. Just as he is leaving, he sees the mouse and comes back in to catch it. He is surprised when Stuart doesn't run, and laughs when he learns that Stuart is a member of the little family. 
Snowbell is angry, chases Stuart around, and he runs into George's room. He falls into a western scene, George built with his father. George doesn't want to, but Stuart convinces him to allow him to play with the train set. They have some fun, and George lets him ride in his little car. Stuart feels happy, and says it's the first time he is fit in since he got here. He sees the unfinished boat, which George and his father were building. The boat was so fine, and Stuart asks why it isn't finished. George explains that he doesn't want to race again, as he is afraid he will lose. Stuart asks to help, but George says he isn't sure he wants a brother. But he asks what about a friend, and George agrees. Their parents return, and are happy to see them bonding. They agree to go to the races together, and that comes up in two days' time. Snowbell is sad to watching the family bond. He reaches out to Monty and links him up with an alley cat, Smokey, who is able to handle the steward issue for him. Smokey is angry, says a cat can't have a rodent for a master, and agrees to take care of Stuart. It's race day, George and Stuart are working on their boat. When a mean kid Anton tells George he will finish last. While Stuart goes to get the remote, George is scared he might lose and wants to pull out of the race. While he is getting the remote, he trips and the remote falls off his hands and someone steps on it. George is sad but Stuart is even sadder that he has ruined their first family outing. The race starts, and the family was talking about going home, but Stuart got on the boat, ready to sail it by hand. Mrs. Little wants Stuart out of the water, she is scared. But Stuart is hell-bent on sailing the boat, he promises he won't let George down. Anton is a cheater, he uses his boat to run over other people's boats, just to get ahead. He tries to run the boat, over with Stuart in it, and George fights him. Meanwhile, Stuart tries to repair the broken sail. Anton loses control of his boat and Stuart wins the race with George's boat. When someone wonders, who is that mouse? George was quick to say it is not a mouse, but his brother. At home, the whole family celebrates the victory, and take a most beautiful family photograph. Just as they were at their happiest, a mouse couple comes asking after Stuart, and says they are his parents. And they have a good story, for why they let him go. They convince the family to let Stuart go with them, and Stuart packs up. George was sad, and wouldn't say goodbye. The littles are sad, and say a teary goodbye to Stuart, who is also sad and leaves with his newfound family. Mrs. Little feels something is not right, but Mr. Little convinces her to let him go. And George offers Stuart the toy car as a parting gift. Instead of a taxi, Stuart and his newfound parents drive off in the small car. The new family takes Stuart to a rough area and tell tales of rough living. Back at the little household, Mrs. Little is sad. And while she is crying, the adoption agency head comes over to give them news of Stuart's parents. They had died in an accident a long time ago. They are surprised to hear this, and Mrs. Little asks her husband to call the police. Just as the police arrive, Snowbell runs out to tell Monty that the jig is up. Smokey proffers the best solution, they have to kill Stuart, like they should have done at the beginning. The police say the kidnappers probably want to kill Stuart, since they didn't call for a ransom. And if they don't want money, then they must be looking to do serious harm to Stuart. And the Littles are devastated. The Stouts, who kidnapped Stuart, plan to deliver him into the hands of Smokey, so he will be killed. Mrs. Stout was sad, she was crying so hard, and forces him to tell Stuart the truth. Stuart was happy to know, that they are not his real parents, and now he can return home to the Littles. He sets off in his car, heading off back to the little house. Back home, all the Littles have gathered. George wasn't going to give up on his brother, and he begs his extended family to make posters. Post them all over town, including the park. While they make posters, Stuart is driving home. The cats hear that he had been warned, and plan to ambush him at the park. They find Stuart, and surround him. He tears off quickly, and driving backwards, away from the cats. He falls into the sewer system, and the cats can't get into it. The littles divide themselves, and leave to cover all parts of town. But just as they leave, Stuart gets home, to meet an empty house. Only Snowbell is in the house, and the cat tries to convince Stuart, that the littles have been celebrating since he left. He didn't believe it at first, but when Snowbell shows him he's been cut out of the family photos, Stuart falls for it. It is the only photo for Stuart, so they take it to make the posters. He becomes sad, cries and leaves the house. The Littles just finished up at the park and headed home, hopeful of finding Stuart. While Stuart is just leaving the little home, sadly ambling away into the night. 
George sits by the phone, waiting to hear someone call to say they've found Stuart, but nobody calls. Monty comes to invite Snowbell, because the cat saw Stuart going into the park. Snowbell is the one that finds Stuart in the tree, and tries to protect him. But the other cats find out, and ask Snowbell to bring him down. Snowbell couldn't do it, instead, he takes Stuart and tries to escape from the other cats. Snowbell rebels against the other cats, and protects Stuart. Stuart and Snowbell team up, to destroy the other cats. After they've defeated their adversaries, they head home together. The littles were about to go to bed, when Stuart comes home. The family is reunited again, and they were all happy once more. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video. Back in my bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel.